Hi, this is Ben Jenkins from Tampa, Florida, and you're listening to Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. As always, once again, I am Doug Benedict, and on behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, we would like to extend a big thank you for spending once again another half hour with us. We cannot express how honored and grateful we are that you would spend a half hour of your busy schedule with us. I know there's a lot of you that go about doing your regular business while you listen to us, There is a gentleman I talked to this summer that is a contractor, and he says he spends his Sunday morning listening to me while he's washing his equipment. So I do want to remind him, I believe he said his church starts about 10 o'clock, so you have two hours to finish getting stuff washed up to get to your church. And then again, today is Sunday. Why are you even working? Why not take a relaxing day, listen to us on the radio, and then Get ready and go to your own church. Or if you do not currently attend a good Bible-believing church, why don't you come visit us? We are a very friendly church, a small church, located in Gregg, New York. Our pastor, if this is the first time you've heard us, is Jim Jenkins. And he will be joining us a little bit later on after we play a song. Our times today are starting at 9 o'clock. We have a fellowship breakfast followed by Sunday School at 9.30. And like to encourage anyone to come along and come to Sunday School. We have classes for just about every age class, kids, teenagers, adults, anything you want. And we try our best to dig into the Word of God and learn something new every Sunday. So again, 9.30 today is Sunday School, followed immediately at 10.30 by the morning service. And that will run until about 2 o'clock. We'll break for several hours, and then we'll be back here again at 6 o'clock for the evening service. So plenty of time to get ready. After you're done listening to this program, you will have, what, an hour and a half before it's breakfast time. Well, that's good math. How about a half hour? Boy, what, what a day already. You will have half hour to get here to church and enjoy some wonderful breakfast. And we have the motto, only a stranger once. So if you come back and you can still say that you don't know anyone, it really is no one's fault but your own. And I don't think anyone has ever come here and said, no one ever shook my hand. No one ever said hi. No one ever introduced themselves because it just doesn't happen here. If you'd like to come give us a try, our address is 6968 Sweeney Road, in Greg, New York. If you are traveling the old-fashioned way, and I don't mean horse and buggy, which that is more than welcome if you really want to come that way, we are located right between Lowville and Booneville. Just head north on Route 12 if you're coming from Lowville, or I'm sorry, coming from Booneville. Head south on Route 12 if you're coming from Lowville, and turn on to the Burks Crossing Road, which is right by the Valley Brook Drive-In. Take that all the way to the end, make a left onto Greg Road, head up the hill, make a right, the first right, onto Sweeney Road, and we're up there about 200 yards on the right. As always, we do broadcast our services live at cbclewiscounty.com and also on livestream.com. So if you have internet access, if you have a computer, if you have a smart TV, a Roku box, you can find us on there. But enough of that, let's get ready for Pastor Jim Jenkins as he comes And he's going to explain a little bit about what this person that is just flat out a liar. Everything coming out of his mouth is a lie. Even some remotely truth stuff still is stuff with lies. Absolutely nothing can be believed from it. And just he complicates everything that is meant to be super easy and free and a no-brainer. So pay attention, 
sit down and enjoy it as we get ready for Pastor to come. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. But before that, let's listen to three bridges as they sing the fountain. Come to the fountain of mercy. Come, thirsty one, don't delay. Grace freely offered is waiting. Jesus will save. And another good morning to you folks. It's good to have you with us one more time on this Lord's Day. As always, delighted to be with you. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17 says this, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. Did you ever meet a liar? I, 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 don't, I don't mean somebody that you, a friend. And, and you got a friend that's a liar? No. You know how friends are sometimes. They, they tell you stories and, you know, they're busting on you. And they, you know they're not telling you the truth. And, and you know, I'm not talking about that kind of, of, of a thing. I'm talking about a person that's just a plain liar. You couldn't believe anything they said. If they told you the sky was blue and it was a sunny day and the sky was blue, you wouldn't believe them because 
All they ever do is lie. I mean, do you ever meet anybody like that? I've known several people like that in my life that were just, just liars. You really could not believe anything that they said. Just a liar. He said, well, I've never really known anybody like that preacher. I guess I'm hanging around with the wrong kind of people. Well, if you've never met anybody, that was just a plain liar. And the Bible says this in Revelation 21 and verse 8. It says, and that all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Liars are a special class of people. And they're going to have their own part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. The Bible tells us that the devil, Satan, Lucifer, in John chapter 8, verse 44, that he is a liar. Not only is he a liar, but he's the father of it. He was the first liar, and he lied to Adam, and he lied to Eve. He lied to Eve, and she believed him. He was a liar. He said, the day that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, your eyes will be opened and know both good and evil, and you should be as gods. You will not die. You surely will not die. Now, God had already told them that if they ate of the tree, that they would die. And Satan came and lied to them and said, no, you won't really die. God just doesn't want you to be wise. And God doesn't want you to enjoy everything. It's the same lie the devil's putting out today. He's a liar. And he lies to people. I cannot tell you. Really, I can't. I don't know. I don't know how many people there are. I cannot tell you how many people that I talk to, you interested in God? And listen, I'm not going to waste my time, and friend, I'm not going to waste their time, my time, anybody's time. If you're not interested in God, if you're not interested in God, I'm not going to waste my time. Really, I'm not. But what has happened is the devil has lied to people. He gets them, they, he gets them to think, it's not really important. God's not really important. Uh, spiritual things are not really important. Most people are so tied up with non-spiritual things, they have no time for the spiritual. See, why is that? Because they've listened to the devil for so long. And the Iliad and the Odyssey, the Odyssey, Homer wrote, you know, Greek writer, thousand years, a couple thousand, several thousand years ago, whatever. When he wrote that about Ulysses and his journeys home and the sound of the sirens, if you heard them, they would draw the ship to the rocks and their ship would be crashed and the men would be killed. The song of the sirens. People have listened to the song of the devil for so long. They have been so lulled to sleep by the sound of Satan that they see, well, no, I'm not really interested in God. I'm not really interested in spiritual things. I'm not really interested in going to heaven. I'm just not interested in it. What's happened? Satan's a liar. He is a liar. He's the father of all lies. He is the father of it. And people have listened to him. You know, some liars are pretty convincing. You believe what they... I remember one time my roommate in school... When I went to, where I went to school in Lynchburg, Virginia, my wife and I went out and got on the bus. We weren't, we were dating at the time. We were engaged at the time. And so we were still lived in the dorms at the time. And so we had gone out to get on the bus like 30 seconds before church was over that night. My roommate came out and said, you left too early. I said, well, why is that? He said, Dr. Falwell fell off the stage and broke his leg. I said, are you serious? He said, absolutely. He said, Dr. Falwell fell off stage and broke his leg. I said, no, kid no kidding. He said, Dr. Falwell fell off stage and broke his leg. About two minutes later, he started laughing. He had been lying. But I had actually believed him, to tell you the truth. People who lie can be very convincing. The devil, my friend, is so convincing. He's so skillful at it. He's an expert at it. He's been at the game for 6,000 years. 
And so what does that got to do with Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17? This. The Bible says this in verse 17. Let me read it to you again. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth come and let him uh, that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The devil has lied for so long. And he has come up with so many convincing lies. So many convincing lies. That, and people believe them. He, he causes people to think, well, there, and I, I've said before, and uh, let me say again, that there are two supposed roads to heaven. There's the works road, and then there's the grace road. Now, they cannot be interchanged. They do, they do not run side by side. They are not parallel highways. It's either works or grace. And by and large, most people think that heaven is gained by works. Whereas the God said, and God said this, that it's strictly by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Suppose you and I met in heaven one day, and for the next million years, I proceeded to tell you how good I was and what I had to do to get to heaven. You get pretty sick of that pretty fast. But the devil would have people to believe. Why? Because he's a liar. And so many people believe that heaven is gained by works, good works. And, you know, being baptized or the Lord's Supper or uh, going to church or being a church member or having some religious creed, or having some I, religious ideas. And, and people believe that if they follow this kind of thing, that they'll get to heaven. I said last Sunday, the problem with that is, if you're living a life that you hope you'll get to heaven by good works, let me say this, and I gotta say it quickly because our time is always short. Listen, there are some people who believe, well, you got to be saved, but you got to live, but you got to have good works in order to get there. Well, yeah, they believe that Jesus is necessary, but he is not totally sufficient to get them to heaven. Friend, let me tell you something that Jesus is not only necessary, but he is sufficient to get us to heaven. There are no good works involved. And I ask you this question How many good things do you have to do? Is there a number? Is there a goal that you're trying to reach and trying to get enough good work so that you can go to heaven? Are you trying to, to, is there some magic number? Well, suppose you come one short of the magic number. Would God not let you in if you're one short of that magic number? Maybe it's just two or three. You see, the problem with works is that nobody knows how many is enough. And nobody knows when you've done enough. And nobody knows, well, if I've done enough, can I lose some of the good works that I've had and then not have enough? Oh, but this verse that we read this morning, the end of the verse says this, let him take the water of life freely. Let him take the water of life freely. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath. Beneath that flood lose all their guilty stain. Lose all their guilty stain, lose all their guilty stain, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stain. When Jesus in John chapter 4 was talking with a woman at the well, Jesus said, if you knew who it was who was talking with thee, you would have asked of me of that water. She said, sir, give me this water that I never thirst or come here again. There is a fountain free to all. And the verse says that. Let him take the water of life freely. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, it talks repeatedly in Romans 5 about the gift. What is the gift? 
and Second uh, Corinthians, I believe it is, 9.15. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. A gift is not something you work for. If you have to work for it, it's not a gift. If I tell you I'm going to give you a birthday present, but you've got to cut my grass first, it's no longer a gift. You cut the grass and earned it. If I tell you I'm going to give you eternal life, but you've got to go to church every Sunday consecutively for, we'll say, 89 weeks, it is no longer a gift, but you have, you've done something to earn it. Satan, who is a master liar, would have you believe that salvation is something to be earned, something to be attained to, something to strive for. When the Bible makes it very clear, it is a free gift. And all you have to do, if I can use that word do, because somebody says, well, see, now you're doing something. So I want to be careful how I say it. So I'll say it like this. All that is necessary is to receive the gift. John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Listen, Satan would have you to believe that salvation is gotten by works, good works, something good. Maybe it's like giving money. Friend, maybe you're listening to me this morning and you say, well, I go to church every single week. Or out of 52 Sundays in a year, I I'll go 50 Sundays, preacher. I'm pretty faithful in my Sunday going to church. Well, Satan would have you to believe that by going to church is going to get you to heaven. I would like to tell you this morning, friend, that if you come to Calvary Bible Church, I'll guarantee that you'll go to heaven if you come to church today. But I can't do that. I cannot do that. Because people don't go to heaven because they go to church. Now, I will say this. People go to church because they are going to heaven. And if you're going to heaven, then, friend, I would encourage you to go to church if you don't go anywhere. I wouldn't give you much for your religion to get you to heaven if it can't even get you to church. I've met people who say, well, I, go to ch I, am, I am a Christian. I am saved, but I don't really go to church. I told my wife, I've told her several times, it's a good thing I don't live in Baltimore. We'd be broke because I spend my, all my time down the ball yard. I go down there. Listen, a person says that they're a ball fan and they never go to a ball yard. There's something wrong with them. A person tells me they're a Christian and they never go to church. Friend, there's something really, really, really wrong there. But I digress. Satan would have you to believe that if you give money, if you read the Bible, if you memorize the Bible, do you know that Joseph Stalin was studying to be a priest? He butchered 15 million of his own people. He was studying to be a priest. I read one account where he had memorized the first four Gospels. See, knowing the Bible doesn't mean that you're a Christian. The devil knows the Bible. When Satan tempted Jesus or when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the devil quoted the Bible to him. Can you imagine that? The devil quoting the Bible. Satan is a liar. He's a great liar. He's a master liar. If there's a degree given in lying, he is the doctor of lying. And he has people to believe that heaven is not a free gift when the Bible repeatedly says that is a gift that it is free. It is free to every and any person who will receive it. My birthday's coming, if you'd you know, like to throw something at me. But no, I'm just kidding. And people will, normally they do. Maybe this year they won't. But normally people give me things for my birthday, which I greatly appreciate. There's one or two things that I can do with that. My wife buy me a gift. She'll give it to me. I can look at that gift and say, I don't want it. It's not up to my, up to my standards. It's not my style. I don't really like it. 
and I can turn the gift away. Now, if I'm smart, I won't do that, but I can re reject the gift. Or the other thing I can do is, boy, I sure do appreciate that. Man, I'm so thankful for, for you giving me that gift. I, I appreciate it to no end that you gave it to me. Now listen, same thing's true about eternal life, friend. The devil's a liar. You may as well put that down and mark that. He said, well, how do you know that? Because Jesus says so in John 8, 44. Jesus said that he was. Now look, you may as well mark it down, put it down. The devil's a liar and he's lying. He deceives according to Revelation. He deceiveth the whole world. He deceives people into believing that there's another road to heaven besides the grace, the free gift road, and it's a road of works. But my friend, I'll tell you, that is a rough road to travel. You'll never know peace. You'll never know contentment. You'll never know deep down inside joy. I'm not saying that Christians never have a bad day. I always have, I have bad days. Everybody has bad days. I'm not saying that Christians don't have bad days. But I'm saying that we have a joy on the inside that the world just doesn't quite get. Satan's a liar. Say, oh, don't believe that. Don't believe that. Don't believe that grace story. It's not true. It's not real. That guy just doesn't want you to have a good time. God doesn't want you to have a good time. Now, Satan's a liar, friend. You better mark it down and listen. Satan's a liar. Let God be true. Now, there is a fountain. And it, from it draws that eternal life. You say, oh, the fountain of youth, Ponce de Leon. No, I'm not talking about that kind. I'm talking about spiritual life. Let him drink. Let him drink. Or let him take the water of life freely. This morning, God is offering you eternal life freely. All you need to do is take a drink of the water, take a bite of the bread, enter in through the door and find green pasture. Bible uses any number of ways to determine, sirs, what must I do to be saved? It's offered to you freely this morning, friend. Whosoever will, let him come. That's you. That was me. One day I came and drank of that water of life freely. Friend, anyone who will drink of that water will have eternal life because it's free. You can have eternal life this morning. All that is necessary is to take a drink of that water. You say, well, preacher, how do I do that? Here it is, this simple. Understand, number one, you're a sinner. That's what you are. Might as well admit it. You're a sinner, you're lost, you cannot go to heaven. Secondly, by faith, trust Jesus as your Savior. By simply calling upon him, Lord, I realize I'm a sinner, but I believe that you love me. Lord, I believe that Jesus died for me on that cross. And the best way I know how, right now, I receive him as my Savior. Friend, would you receive him as your Savior today? Don't listen to that liar of the devil. Listen to what God said. You can take of the water of life freely. All you need to do is take a drink of it, a sip of it today to have eternal life. My friend, trust Jesus today. Call upon him today. Ask him to save you today. The devil's a liar. He'll tell you. He keeps telling you, no, 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 no. Just wait. But trust Jesus today, because I'm telling you, tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, don't buy into the lies of the devil. He has everything so complicated. Salvation is so free. Think of any possibility that there, that there ever, that you could even think of. And something always has some kind of flaw in it. God figured out the most perfect way to make salvation free and available for everyone and anyone. So won't you accept that free gift today? If you have any questions on how you can be saved or any questions about the program, give us a call. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271 or send us an email. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, won't you come and join us today? 
there's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord willing, we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.